season. Um, it's not going to be an in-depth look into each product. just going to give you a, a quick view, uh, maybe a couple thoughts on it in case any of these products are things that you're considering. But I will say up front though that there is definitely one, maybe two products here I'm going to make a separate video on because I really think that they're uh, exceptional and even having not used them yet I'd really like to give you a much closer look into these, uh, into these particular products. So but let's run through <coughs> some of the things here. These are Bass Pro Shops tungsten nail weights and these are uh, 1 16th ounce each. They're useful little things. I plan to use these on my uh, Kitec, my Swing Impact Fats. They actually have little holes kind of pre-marked on the bottom of the Kitec so um, you can weight them in this way uh, as opposed to like a weighted swim bait hook. Have some Finesse hooks here. I use this style for wacky rigging. And these are uh, Hayabusa's. These are from Tackle Warehouse. These are small. These are when uh, I'm going to a very small, maybe like a 4 inch Senko, something of that nature. My favorite hooks actually are these though, the owners. I'm kind of on a quest to find the best wacky hook. I really, really like the owners. Um, I just wish that these wire guards or maybe a gauge or two thicker. I like that they compress easily and I certainly like these more than the ones that are a loop uh, like the ones that you bend and you put underneath the barb um, like VMC uses that and um, Gamagatsu has two, they have a version that goes underneath there. <clears throat> I prefer this style, uh, I like the hookup ratio but I wish they were just a little bit more resistant to bending, just a smidge. But these are awesome hooks here, I love these. Got some little uh, rattles here, and uh, these rattles specifically are to go into the Konami Psychodad. They have a very large cavity there, intended for an eight millimeter rattle. And these are some of the loudest that I could find. I'm on a quest, uh, also in terms of hooks, to find the best swim bait hook, and I have quite a few. <laughs> I've probably right now and. And in total, I've used probably swim bait hooks from oh six or seven different manufacturers, and I haven't tried the Trocar. But um, for me, I'm not talking like about the sharpness of it. I find you know most of them to be more than adequately sharp. But the geometry and the dimensions of the hook, um, the spacing here between eyelet to barb, this gap, not only the spacing but then the geometry here. Uh, how much it's going to protrude through this angle here if it's pointing more downward or upward. I've used quite a few hooks and um, <laughs> I'm getting pretty anal about this. But this one here, I'm liking the the dimensions of it. And I'll go into another video on that, on just swim bait hooks. I think one of my videos, because I have so many now, I'm going to compare all the different hooks I've used and why I think some are better than others. Um, but these, again, these I use these very limitedly. I just, I love those uh, Kitec Swing Impact Fats, and I use them so much. It's really one of my prime go-to baits, and I'm just always trying to find the absolute best hook for it. So um, I have a lot of great ones, but I'm going to be trying this. Next up, saw these. I thought they were pretty cool. They're just really sparkly. As you can see, like, even there's the black and blue. 
you could just see that thing is just super, it's like little diamonds in there, no matter how you move it, hundreds of those things are reflecting like crazy. I don't know if the chartreuse is coming out on camera. I don't see it so well through my viewfinder. But they all, in person, shine like crazy. Hopefully you can see that. I like things that have a little bit more flesh. So I'm going to try these on some of my uh, spinnerbaits, chatterbaits. I'm going to use this one actually with uh, one of my swimbaits, Kytec, just to give it a little bit of a bigger profile. So these are star flash silicone uh, skirts. Next up, very very cool trailer. Um, very cool trailer actually. I just saw these and can't wait to try these. I love the idea because essentially it's like um, it's kind of like a like a kicking frog. It's a really old. It is just a very scaled down top water um, frog, kind of like the, there's so many, like the Stanley Ribbit or the Strike King, uh, I think it's like a Rage Frog, but you know what I mean, they're the uh, hard body ones that you kind of work as a buzz bait, and they got these, you know, paddle things in back and the skinny legs, and so this is designed as a trailer, I love the two-tone finish too, the white and the chartreuse, and I just imagine, you know, a lot of this stuff, again, it's all pre-season, so I haven't put it in the water, but I'm hoping it looks to be something that's going to have a really great erratic kicking action and just something different than your normal trailers. Than like a little grub or, you know, um, the little just straight, you know, twin trailers like on a spinnerbait. Or even like a swimbait, using that as a trailer. I just, I really think that this is going to, look at how far like they're offset to the sides. I think this is going to look fantastic and give a nice, real erratic movement in the water. I actually rigged one up on one of my chatterbaits here. You can kind of check it out. I don't know. It looks like a winner to me. We'll see if the fish agree. I think it's going to be all about the action. Very excited about this one. Speaking of grub trailers, I did pick up some of those. It's uh, Kalins, and I uh, like this. It's a very, very natural kind of like a smoke with um, you know rainbow colors in there to be used in very clear water. I like these a lot. And these are pretty big. They they call them five inch grub. People who make grubs they kind of vary. Like these five inch ones are the same size as some of the other four inch ones. I don't know, but uh, they're 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 pretty decent size. Good for again, good for clear water. Okay, let's get into some hard baits. Got some cotton cordell super spots. Uh, it's a great color here. A little subdued. Has a chartreuse belly. Uh, a little bit darker on top with the sparkle. Gold, very fine sparkle on the side, and you have that kind of reddish crayfish. Transitional color there. I like this one. Picked up a few of these. I got Bass Pro Shops. They were on sale for one a dollar ninety-seven. That's half ounce. Here's uh, another half ounce. This is the classic color, basically. Um, it's like if you had to choose one color, you'll always read on forums to get the uh, the chrome, chrome and blue, chrome blue back. Very very old school colors proven itself to just be versatile in lots of different types of waters, many different types of uh, uh, bodies of water. Great lore. Again, $1.97, can't beat that. That's for the uh, the classic size, I guess the half inch uh, or half ounce size. And then I got one in a smaller size here. And I'm always partial to these colors. I like baits that employ a little bit of like a silver and a gold. You know, sometimes fish are really keying in on gold. And they want a gold lure. Um, talking about like flashy baits, and sometimes they're keying in on silver. I like to split the difference myself. I've seen over the years just having a lot of success with having something that kind of employs a little bit of both. And uh, this is a little bit smaller. Intentionally, I want to get a little bit of a smaller one. 
these come in at a little quarter ounce so can't wing them quite as far casting wise but a little bit of a smaller profile so great lures for the money moving along very excited about this bait I'm a big MEPS fan MEPS has just is like kind of it's like it doesn't exist anymore for I think a lot of fishermen it's seen as like the old school lure that somebody's father or grandfather used the brand anyway obviously not this lure here it probably looks a little funny to you uh, I don't think a lot of people are wise to this particular model but yeah MEPS you know, world's number one lure that's probably just in sales volume because they've been around so long selling inline spinners for so long one thing I do like about MEPS though is that they give you a product description about this product on the back. They don't just have like some generic thing about their products in general. Everything here is particular to this floor, to the dorsal uh, fins spinner. And uh, so what I really like about this bait, essentially it's a spinner bait. You know, let's just let's get down to brass tacks here. It's a spinner bait with a compact profile. Um, the same could be true, I guess, of like a, like a chatter bait, but you have a different kind of action, a different vibration. Um, I like this compact profile. This is a number four MEPS blade, which is pretty sizable, and you can see that's an Indiana style blade. So it's a combination of speed and thump. Obviously, the unique thing here is this plastic fish. The name says dorsal fin, so it's obviously got this pronounced fin here. And you have this skirt, and then you have a free-floating, wide-gap hook with a little, there's a little important thing to note here, there's a little barb right there. So you could actually run this totally weedless. You could run a grub on here, which I intend to do in thick cover. Run a grub, kind of Texas style, and just, you know, point the tip of the grub, text pose it in the end. And you could throw this into some really nasty slot, or you could just have the hook, you know, free in the back. And the fact that it is a free-floating hook is uh, very dynamic in terms of when you get a fish on and, and not breaking them off. It's not a stationary, you know, like a normal spinnerbait. This should cast really well, being that it's all in line. It's 5 eighths of an ounce. Uh, they didn't have to, but I like the fact that they went with kind of the red here in terms, this is just the weights. If you look at any MEP spinner, you'll see like little circular things there. That's just what gives it its weight. But I like the red, you know. if. Uh, if you have to guess, you know, it's kind of like the fish is injured or maybe the gill or something. You know, just the red I think is beneficial. White skirt with the uh, sparkles in it. So really excited to use this. Really excited to use this. I've had a lot of success on just MEPS spinners. I, I use them for bass and I just go with the larger sizes, the four blades or the five blades. You know, it's like somewhere along the line someone decided that spinner baits is what you use on bass and obviously they work really well. But um, spinnerbait has a really, really big profile. It, it does. And if you want to kind of get the spinnerbait image, you know, that spinning, flash, vibration with a pulsating skirt, but if they're just not keying in on, you know, a body and then two separate spinning things next to it, um, something like this is pretty cool. Moving on, we got a, a bomber. This is in the four to six foot range. And when I buy crankbaits now, I probably have more than I'll ever really need or use, but I end up buying them probably just for myself because I look at them and I like the way they look. But I really had a gaping hole in um, just kind of like a white crankbait. I have actually just one I got last year and it's never run true for me. It's really erratic, but not in a good way. It's, it's, it just doesn't run right. And I've tried to tune it and I can't get it to run right. So I want to pick up another one. And I love this one because it's white, but with that kind of hologram reflectiveness to it. And it has that big black spot there. So I just like the look of this one. A little bit of uh, kind of rose color on the front there. Actually, I have these open. I can just show you. Bill Dance has got his name on there for you know, whatever reason. You know, bomber, bomber cranks are solid, you know, just, just as good as the next crank. But uh, I think that's a funky color. A little bit different. Moving along, <clears throat> I've really become a fan, a big fan of Norman Lures uh, just recently. I kind of slept on these guys for a long time and uh, I've opened my eyes to them and the reason being is because Norman provides finishes that nobody else provides. If you go to their site, um, 
the Norman site, you know, and Tackle Warehouse and others, you'll get a few that they care. But if you go to Norman site and you see how many finishes they offer in any of their crankbaits, it's staggering. And they, not only the color choice, but the way in which they do it. They tend to do a lot of this. They have, um, like, just baits that are, like this guy here, like, they do, like, splatter finishes. And then, um, you know, just they do lots of sparkles in different configurations. They're just very different. Very different than a lot of manufacturers. You could, you could just... If this wasn't in a box, this was someone's tackle box, you could almost always spot a Norman just by the way their kind of design philosophy. And I really, really like their colors. I think they're fantastic. So this one here, I think, is, is this called? This one called Slick. And this is a Mad N, 2 to 5 feet. Love it. Square bill. And just, you know, no matter when this thing flashes, you're going to get the green in the roll, a little bit of the red, you're just going to get all those little sparkly guys. No matter how you look at it, fish is going to see little sparkles. So, really, really liking the Norman stuff. Um, probably going to end up picking up some more of these. Here's another one. This is a middle end. Dives, uh, what is that, 7 to 9. And what I really like about this one, going into a little bit of deeper water, my thing now is... Uh, again, because I mentioned before, I have a lot of crankbaits. If I'm going to get one, I kind of want to get one now in just colors that I think nobody else is throwing. I look at the rack now sometimes when I'm in the, in the sporting goods store and I say, all right, what's the one that I don't think anybody else is going to get? You know, everybody's going to get the traditional colors, you know, natural shiner colors and gold and shad, sexy shad, uh, chartreuses, fire tigers, you know, the list goes on and on and on. But I was like, you know what? I don't have any blue and violet lures. And how often does a fish see it? Doesn't mean that the fish is going to like it, just because they don't see it very often. But my personal, and this is just opinion and conjecture, is that I feel you're a little bit more likely to get a reaction strike out of a lure that has a color that the fish almost never see. I think if a fish sees a shad pattern lure, you know, guys are going to be throwing that all day, every day. And, and they're going to work. Absolutely, they're going to work. But I think for reaction strikes, maybe there's not that hesitation um, if it's to see something totally ab abnormal. You know, just, just my thoughts on it. Someone could argue that if it's totally a different color, that that's the one time they would stop and think about it. But that's just been my experiences. So this one's really, it's kind of like a violet and a blue, and it has all those little flakes in it. Again, Norman's just thousands of them just glistening like little diamonds in there so this is a uh, pretty excited to use that one in that kind of mid-range depth of seven to nine let's get those guys out of the way moving along cabela's lipless cranks i'm a sucker for lipless cranks i don't need any more but i always seem to pick up one more love the color here i uh listen to a lot on rick clun and kind of as like career advice. I've seen a couple instances now where he's found just over an entire career copper colors. Copper colors, he says, just are just a good color, you know, so many times over. And I like this one here because it's just a good blend of being natural, kind of goldish, kind of silverish, but copper and green, just very natural looking. And um, love the fact uh, that it has this little trailer and back also has a little glistening there you can see all those reflectors I've got a number of lipless cranks but none that have a tail feather as a rear hook and of course you can just buy these separate and put it on but I saw it in the store and it just made me realize I don't have any like that you know so this is going to have its own action in the water and uh, again something different you know something different to throw and then look at the head here it's like big eyebrows you see that so the lure itself is rather thin, but they really flatten it out and give it flanges there on top. So I'm really curious to see, uh, vibration-wise, what this feels like in the water. But uh, to me, I, I think that's a really fantastic looking lipless crank. I think the colors are awesome. Okay, moving along. Suspending jerk baits are a huge hole in my tackle arsenal. I just about never ever throw them. I think I have one. I mean, I probably have over 50 crankbaits, but I think I have one suspending 
jerkbait. I just don't find a lot of instances where I fish where these are applicable. Um, in terms of, you know, just the weeds and everything else, it's just... It, but I decided I'd pick up a few this year, uh, and in particular early in the season before the weeds come in. Uh, give these things a try when the conditions are right. And I love the clown color. Clown color's been around since phew, turn of the century. And I'm not talking 2000, I'm talking 1900. Ever since guys have been carving wood lures, the clown color's been in existence, and there's a reason for that. This uh, has caught probably millions of fish over the years. It's just a proven color. Can't go wrong with that. Okay, next up in line, uh, my other suspending uh, jerkbait. And this is a really great color. Now this goes back to a natural color, kind of different than what I've seen before with like the purples and the blues and stuff like those Normans. But this makes up the majority of the lures I buy. I usually err on the side of these natural colors. I like them that have a little sheen, a little, you know, something going on. So this is the Rick Klun, the STX. Um, as I understand, this is a, a clone or a mimic of a Mega Bass Vision 110. I'm not someone who's really ever going to buy a Mega Bass lure. I'm never going to put that money down. And um, so I just I saw this and I just I like the shape of it basically. I just like that it's a little bit different than your traditional cut. It has like these contours and everything else. It's tapered and uh, you know I've seen some videos online of these things in the water and they move great. So, um, yeah, this was like $7 as opposed to a Mega Bass, which is like 25 or something. So I think that's a really nice kind of natural color. It almost kind of has like an oil slick thing to it. It's got like that kind of rainbow, rainbow thing. Just so when you see like an oil slick on the ground, like underneath a car or something. But predominantly it's silver, and it just, to me, I don't know, I just like it. I hope the fish like it. Black back, RC, STX. Bottom's funky. You got kind of like a burnt orange going into a violet. Again, it's like it's something different, you know? Last two lures. Some of the, probably, I say these for last because these are the ones I'm most excited about. Um, I just, I saw this and I knew about these, but I finally saw one in person. These are the Ike's custom colors. And, you know, I, I could care less if it's Ike or whatever else, but um, there's so many colors out there. But I, I like the I like the colors in these Ike's custom color series. I think they're really, really funky, and they're, they're different, and um, I just like them. I don't care what they call them or whose name is on it. I just think they're really, really great-looking colors. This one's such a subdued yellow. It's so subtle. It's so muted. It's not a very bright, not a chartreuse. It's just a very... When you see one, I hope the camera picks it up right. Sometimes my white balance is a little off, but this lore here, the colors of it are just in my opinion, fantastic. You can see the back of it has a very, very fine, uh, it looks like primarily gold flake in there. And then you have this silver kind of scale pattern on the side going into that very subtle yellow. And I don't know if it's going to come up on camera here, but all in the yellow paint is also very, very fine glitter. Can't tell on my screen here if that's going to show or not, but I'm just going to move it around a little bit in case it is. And then you have a little bit of that orange on the front. So this is the DT3 flat. I have a regular DT3, which is super wide. has all kinds of wobbly action. Um, it's a real nice square bill. And I want to get this one for a much tighter wobble. You can see the bill there. Rapalas are nice because they have it labeled, which is always a great thing. On my other ones, I etch it in. I etch in the diving depth, just with, with like, the edge of a knife. But the Rapalas have it built in, which is good. So there's the uh, DT3 flat, very excited about that. And it looks like my battery's about to run dead, and if it does, sorry, because I'm not going to reshoot this, but let me just get this on camera real quick. This is the uh, the BX Minnow, and this is one that I'm going to make a separate video of, because this thing is kind of like lure eye candy. I saw this in the store, and I bought it basically just for myself. You know, I'm going to fish it, but I saw it, and it was like jewelry. <laughs> I just was amazed at the way this looked. <clears throat> hey, what's up? Yeah, battery went dead, um, but I'm just going to put in a new battery here, finish this up. Um, yeah, so the Rapala BX Minnow, I'm going to make a separate video on this thing. I just want to really show you some close-ups of this. It is a just a just probably the most gorgeous looking lure I've ever seen. 
I mean, honestly, I just kind of want to put it in like a little case. It's just, uh, it's, it's fantastic. I've never been so kind of smitten or enamored just looking at a lure. It's, it's, it's crazy. Um, I hope it produces. I mean, I hope it's a good fish catcher. I can't see any reason why it shouldn't be. Um, but, you know, again, it's always the way we interpret a lure. What we think is beautiful, if there's one rule I've learned, it doesn't mean the fish will like it. Sometimes the fish like the ugliest or plainest, you know, things. Anyway, swim depth 3 to 5. This comes in at 3 eighths of an ounce. PX minnow. And the smelt color. Alright, everybody. So, uh, yeah, that's it. That's uh, basically my new hard baits and some accessories for 2013. Just wanted to show you some of these things, give you a little bit of a a close-up and um, yeah I'm gonna be doing a video on this one and maybe one or two other things uh, individually to give you a better idea alright thanks for watching